بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. Today we're gonna be starting from Hadith 25, continuing with Arba'in Awi and Nawawi, a forty Hadith of Nawawi, and the Hadith we're doing today is عن أبي ذر رضي الله عنه أيضا أن أناسا من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قالوا للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رسول الله. So Abu Abi Dar رضي الله عنه narrates, may Allah be pleased with him, that some people from the messenger, from the companions of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, they said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, يا رسول الله, O Messenger of Allah. ذهب أهل الدثور بالأجور ذهب أهل الدثور the people أهل الدثور are the people who have wealth so the people who have wealth have taken all the أجر so أجور is the plural of أجر so they've taken all the reward and then they explain they said يصلون كما نصلي they pray as we pray which means they get the reward of praying, like we get the we get the reward. وَيَصُومُونَ كَمَا نَصُومُ and they fast the same way that we fast. So we're they're equal in that term, in those terms, which is their praying, and the people of money or the rich people are praying and the poor people are praying. وَيَتَصَدَّقُونَ and they give charity before طُولِ أَمْوَالِهِمْ but they give charity. With the extra money that they have left. So it's like they're saying they're competing. Uh, they're saying that we are con trying to compete with the people who have wealth, who are, who are also among us, the, the companions. But they, are, they have an advantage because they have money and they are they're able to give charity. And we don't, we're not able to give charity because we don't have this extra money. So the Prophet وسلم, told them. قال أوليس قد جعل الله لكم Did Allah not make for you ما تصدقون what you can give charity from So Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم tells them that you can give charity in other means Charity is not only you know with wealth but the person can give charity in other ways So Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم widens the concept of charity and he says, "Inna bi kulli tasbihatin sadaqa." In every tasbih, every time he says "Subhanallah," is charity. Wa kulla wa kulli takbiratin sadaqa. Every time you say "Allah Akbar," in every takbir, every time you say "Allah Akbar," there is charity. Wa kulli tahmidatin sadaqa. Every time you say "Alhamdulillah," there is charity. Wa kulli tahlilatin sadaqa. And every time you say La ilaha illallah, it's charity. Wa amrun bi Wa amrun bil ma bi ma'roofin sadaqa. Commanding the good is charity. Wa nahiyun an munkarin sadaqa. And forbidding the evil is charity. Wa fi budi ahadi kum sadaqa. And in the relationship the person has with his spouse, so the the intercourse. There is charity. Even in that, there is charity. So he widened the concept of charity, the understanding of charity, because when a, a person who is given charity um, by using um, his body, okay, this is he will get the same. He can get the same reward as the person who is given um, charity with his money. So basically, it's it's like saying also your health and your body. Can be used to give charity. Okay. So then they said, "Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, our yati ahaduna shahwatahu." Does one of us, um, you know, fulfill his desires? Wa yakun lahu fiha ajr, and he gets rewarded for that. So, like it said, like we uh, the hadith said at the beginning that even if the person has intercourse with his wife, then he will get charity, and he will get the reward of charity. 
So the Prophet told him how, told them how this is charity and how they get reward. قَالَ أَرَأَيْتُمْ لَوْ وَضَعَهَا فِي حَرَامٍ See if he was able if he was to put his uh, basically uh, private part. Okay, if he was to put his private part, or he was if he was to fulfill this desire in haram in in a haram way, akana ali wizrun, would he have any sin upon him? Which is yes. Fakadalika ida wadaha fil haram. So if he fulfills his desire in halal in a halal way, kana lahu ajrun. He will get rewarded for that. So basically, the last concept is telling us that the last idea of understanding charity uh, the, is that when you stay away from the haram, that is also a charity on yourself. So you don't, you know, get the sin of falling into haram. So basically, the concept of sadaqa or charity is not only through wealth. A person can give charity by helping others, which is, um, first of all, by helping himself, doing the subha- say, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, but that's like extra ibadah, okay? That's extra ibadah, and then also, um, the the way people get higher positions in paradise is by giving charity, is by giving charity, and that will give them an extra, an extra mile, or they will, beca- they will have a higher place. So for them, by doing these, these things, they also can, achieve uh, this extra reward okay so the the aim of giving charity is to get reward and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is telling them that he can do other things to get this extra reward as well okay so there is another narration where they actually say Ya Rasulullah imagine if they do the same thing then they will still beat us then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said This is a virtue, a bounty that Allah has given to them That's something extra So if the person is rich And he's basically using his money and his wealth To get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Then that is a virtue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that person So it's hard to compete with that person Allah alam. Okay, so this hadith is telling us something very important Which is you can get pick up extra reward by uh, doing these forms of ibadah to get a high position in Jannah. And also it shows you how the companions, how the Allah, they used to compete in the khair. But nowadays it's like people are competing in the evil. There's no competition in khair. But it should be like how the Sahaba were. They're thinking about how they can get a higher status in paradise. Wallahu alam. Any questions on that hadith? Any questions on that hadith? Okay, so the next hadith is it's similar to the previous one because it shows us that you you can give charity by doing other forms of ibadah, especially with your body. Um, so this hadith is narrated by Abu Hurairah, and Abu Hurairah taradi Allahu anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Kullu sulama min al nasi ali sadqa." So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Kullu." On every sulama joint, minan nasi of the person, Ali Sadaqah, there's charity he must perform and give. So basically, on all the joints, so I don't know how many joints a person, a human being has in his body, um, all those joints, the person has to give charity. But he can't, he's not giving, he doesn't have to give wealth, he doesn't have to give money, he can give charity. Through doing good deeds, okay, with this using this body, using using this good uh, the body to uh, give charity, with which means because the basically charity is to give something if you have wealth to give extra of it, okay, and to show that you are happy with this blessing that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you. So the person has to give charity, and this is how he has to do it every day. He can do he can do it many ways, and there is a hadith which also says if the person does, if he prays two rak'ats, um, duha, if he prays duha, that will suffice him, okay. But this is what the person can do, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, كل يوم تطلع في شمس. Every day, the sun rises, the person can has to give charity. 
So you can do as the hadith says, ta'adilu bayna thnayn, sadaqah. Reconciling or judging between two people fairly is charity. So two people fight, argue, and to judge fairly between them, that is giving your free time, your energy. Uh, it might not bring you any benefit, it might put you in a situation where it's uncomfortable, but you get, you're helping people. وَتُعِينُ الرَّجُلَ فِي دَابَتِهِ and you'd help a, a person في دابته, in his mount فتحمله عليها or you help him get onto his mount أو ترفع له عليها or you help, you help him lift uh, up his متاعه, his belongings this is صدق, this is charity so someone who's trying to climb some, somewhere people used to ride horses before you help him climb his horse or you help, you take something up for him when he's climbed وَالْكَلِمَةُ الطَّيِّبَةُ صَدَقَةً Saying a good word is charity. وَبِكُلِّ خُطْوَةٍ And every step, تَمْشِيهَا You walk to إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ To the salah is charity, sadaqah. وَتُمِيضُ الْأَذَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ To remove harm from the road is charity. So these are different forms of charity a person can do. But if the person is not doing any good deeds, then on the Day of Judgment he will be questioned. Why did he not give this charity? He will be basically someone who has kept behind um, basically uh, the wealth or the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him and he didn't use it. And he didn't show his gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are very important um, ibadat. And most of them, as you can see, it's to help other people. So generally speaking, helping other people um, even saying good words It's a way you can contribute To people's lives and help them Even if you don't have uh, the wealth Allah It's a very important hadith as well uh, Any questions on this hadith? We move on to the next one The next one is عن النواس بن سنعان سمعان رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم So النواس النواس narrates and he says, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "قال البر حسن الخلق البر which is righteousness, is good character. Okay, so being a good person and practicing the religion is the best way to show good akhlaq. So the person who is righteous. Um, sorry, if I explain again, let's say." Um, one of the most important, whenever you see this word, like uh, when you see a word that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, for example, al-birru husn al-khuluq, or al-hajju arafa, it shows the most important aspect of that part, that uh, thing. For example, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al-hajju arafa, that hajj is arafa. So that means arafa is the focal point of and the core of hajj. So if the person misses, Standing in Arafah, his Hajj is basically void, not accepted. And also righteousness and being a good Muslim, the, the core of being a good Muslim is to have good akhlaq and good character. So if the person has a bad character, then he's miss, missing the core of being a righteous Muslim. The next hadith is, وَالْإِثْمُ مَا حَاكَ فِي صَدِرِكَ And sins are something that you know, bothers you haka fi sadrik in your heart, in your chest. So we know that the the sin, sins are many. There's many sins that people commit. But this tells us the core of sins. So sins make the person feel guilty, and they make the person feel worried. Okay. So this is a sign to recognize a sin. If the person feels guilty. This is also a good sign, that means his Iman is still alive um, But he knows that he's doing something wrong Even if people tell him, you're right, it's okay, be proud of yourself And then deep inside he's not happy and he knows this is wrong This is a strong sign that is left behind like uh, when a person commits a sin And you do not like people seeing you do this So that's another sign Another sign that something is a sin, is that you would hide it from other people, you'd be ashamed to show it, and that shows that it's not something that people, because people recognize ma'roof the good, 
and they dislike the evil naturally. Okay, so if the person knows that he's hiding this, then it's basically um, most likely he knows in deep inside he feels and he knows it's a sin. Okay, so these are signs of what it, what it feels like to you know or to recognize a sin. But obviously there are other signs. That's a very important uh, hadith uh, and is narrated by Muslim, Rawah Muslim, and the hadith goes on. Or it's a similar uh, narration to the hadith. وَعَنْ وَابِسَةَ وَعَنْ وَابِسَةَ وَابِسَةَ بْنَ مَعْبَدَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ أَتَيْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So he says, uh, Sahabi, Wabisa, uh, he says, I came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَقَالَ And I said, or Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, جِئْتَ تَسْأَلُ عَنِ الْبِرْ Did you come to ask me? Did you come? Tas'alu to ask Anil Bir about righteousness. Utu Naam. He said I said yes. Faqala then the Prophet said, Istafti Kalbak. Listen to your heart. Okay, consult your heart, which is like you know, just listen to what your what you feel inside and listen to your heart. Al Birru righteousness Matma'anat Ilayhi nafs is what the soul feels tranquil with. So when you feel tranquil with something, it's a sign that, like your soul is happy with it. It's a, it's a sign. It makes you feel good. Wadma'anna ilayhi al-qalb and also your heart feels good as well. You're not worried. Okay. So usually these, you know, the nafs, the soul, and the heart. Uh, some people make it similar, but here we can see that the the soul. Is basically the life. It's the life what brings the person life. So if the person doesn't have the soul, he dies. And the heart as well is where his iman is. So that can also uh, die. Okay. So the person doesn't feel. He doesn't feel basically. He doesn't recognize the good. He doesn't recognize the evil. Um, so when the person feels like deep inside, he has a gut feeling. This is good. And his heart, he doesn't feel worried and anxious. This is also a good sign. This is a sign that it's basically um, righteous. So it doesn't mean a person says, Oh, <clears throat> I feel good about this. And I think it's good. When the hadith says it's haram, or the Quran says it's haram, or the sheikh is saying it's haram by using evidences. Okay? <coughs> but it means that, for example, a person feels good, and he knows it's good, uh, and he also finds out later on, let's say, that it's some something good, so he doesn't need to worry. Sorry, one second. Okay, so like we said, this is not the only way to recognize something which is good, but it's one of the strongest signs. Well, if haka fi nafsik, and a sin is what bothers you again <coughs> in your soul. What taraddada fi sadr, and it keeps coming back to your heart, like you keep. Basically thinking about it. But in Aftaka Nasu Aftok, even if people give you fatwa. But in Aftaka Nas, people give you fatwa and they continue giving you uh, fatwa in your favor. Okay, so basically this is telling us that sometimes you might not know something is wrong or haram, but you can feel it inside because your um your soul is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it recognizes the good and it's naturally human beings are created to be good okay the fitra so the fitra tells us that this is not good like human beings have been created uh, fitra Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran fitra tallahi allati fatra al-nasa alayha la tabdeela li khalqillah it's the natural inclination that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created people upon nothing can change it so it could be hidden it could basically a person can lose this feeling, this sense, but it can be revived. So the naturally, pe human beings accept the good. They don't like the evil. That's natural. But then through upbringing, through being conditioned by the society, and they say al maru ibn ibn bayatihi, that a human being becomes uh, he he becomes like the society he grows up in or the environment he grows up in. 
So it's very important to grow up, to bring children up in a good society and environment. But let's say if the person is brought up in a completely bad environment and he has no access to the khair, uh, still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him this natural recognition in his heart to even know la ilaha illallah and to, to recognize it, but he just has to accept it. So some people when they accept Islam, they say I, was always, I always felt like a Muslim. But Islam is to actually confirm, uh, to confess it as well, to say La ilaha illallah. So this is a very important hadith in the situation that we are, a lot of Muslims are in today. A lot of people don't know what's halal, what's haram, what's good, what's bad. And there's a very good indication, a very good um, instrument that allows you to know which is good and which is bad, which is your heart. And then on top of that, a person can do more research and find the truth. Sometimes the Sheikh says to you, it's halal, it's okay, you can do that. But deep inside your heart, you know it's haram. So you can, it's better for you to, uh, to avoid it. Wallahu alam. Any questions on this hadith? Any questions on this hadith? Inshallah, I'll continue the next hadith, uh, which is hadith 28. An Abi Naji Naji al Irbad ibn Sariyah radiyallahu anhu qal. He said, uh, "This companion Naji al Irbad ibn Sariyah, Abi Naji." Uh, so his name is al Irbad ibn Sariyah. He says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, يعني وعظنا رسول الله. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam admonished us. He gave us sermon. موعظة uh, admonish, admonishment or sermon وجلت منها القلوب the, the hearts we felt fear in our hearts وذرفت and the uh, tears منها العيون fell from our eyes like we, we cried out of um, this feeling that we had فقلنا we said يا رسول الله O Messenger of Allah كأنها موعظة مودع it's as if you are speaking like a person who's, you know, saying his farewell, or his last words. For all sinners, so give us advice. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, قَالَ أُوسِيكُمْ بِتَقْوَ اللَّهِ I advise you, I console you to have taqwa of Allah, which is the most important wasiyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah says, we have, um, you know, commanded you and those before you to have taqwa. So that's going, it's similar to the Qur'an. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him that when a person is giving people advice, you should tell them to fear Allah. Taqwa is more than fearing Allah, which is practicing the religion correctly and stay away from the haram. وَالسَّمْعِ وَالطَّاعَةِ And to listen and obey Which means to obey the leader وَإِن تَأَمَّرَ عَلَيْكُمْ عَبْدٌ Even if um, in, there is in charge of you a slave So at that you can imagine people in Arabia And who had themselves had slaves Imagine if this slave became their leader Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said Still you should obey him Which means people who don't deserve to be leaders Even if they become leaders you should obey them Whoever lives from amongst you Which means he lives long He will see a great difference A great difference between what people believe What people follow So this is within even the Muslim Ummah Within the Muslim Ummah there will be different groups and sects People have different interpretations. Okay? Um, so the Prophet wasallam said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Stick to my sunnah. Follow my way. وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَاء And the sunnah and the way of the khulafa, the al-rashidin, the four uh, khulafa al-rashidin. Al-Mahdiyin, the guided khalifats. Okay? Follow them. عَضُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِدِ Hold it with your mawla teeth, which means hold it to it firmly. 
stick to a family. Okay? وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْتَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ And stay away from muhtathat, which is innovative matters. So stay away from bid'ah, innovation, which is bringing new things into the religion. Like celebrating Muhammad s.a.w.'s birthday, which he didn't do. Celebrating the new year. Muslims celebrating, for example, uh, many other celebrations that people make up. And also different forms of ibadah that people have made up. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Every bid'ah, every innovation is misguided. So there's no good bid'ah or bad bid'ah or every single bid'ah or innovation which is adding something new to religion is misguidance. So this is a very important hadith which tells us, uh, summarizes the whole religion for us. The Prophet ﷺ told them first of all within themselves to have taqwa. He told them as a community you should follow the leader and not cause chaos. And that's been the problem throughout history. Muslims, there are groups of Muslims who have been rebelling against the leaders which has caused chaos and havoc killing so many Muslims and uh, not li- letting Muslims live in peace throughout history okay uh, as long as the leader is a Muslim they should follow and obey in the Muslim countries uh, similarly in non-Muslim countries people should abide by the laws as long as it's not telling them to commit haram and mostly through human ra- human rights uh, even the human rights say people have rights to practice their religion so People, if people are forced to do haram, they can. Uh, they either have to try to find ways to change these laws, or they should make hijrah. So, this hadith also tells us that people should stick to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi and stay away from the innov- and from innovation. And there will be people who all claim to be Muslims, but they won't be following following Muslims correctly. So, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Follow my way and the way of the Khulafa Rashidin." Okay, khair. Any question on this hadith? Any questions on this hadith? This hadith is narrated by Mu'ad ibn Jabal. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu qal. Qultu ya Rasulullah. I said, oh messenger of Allah. Akhbirni bi'amalin yudkhiluni al-jannah. Tell me of a good deed that will allow me to enter al-jannah. Wa yuba'iduni min al-nar. وَيُبَاعِدْنِي مِنَ النَّارِ And will make me far away or keep me away from hellfire. So he wants to get to Jannah. He wants to get close to enter Jannah and he wants to be far away from hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu said, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ You have asked a very important question and about the important matter. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلِيهِ And it is easy for the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for. So in the next part of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu tells him the five pillars of Islam, which is the shahada, the salah, the salam, the zakah, the hajj. So he tells him to practice the five pillars of Islam. Ta'abudu Allah, you worship Allah, la tushrik bihi shay'an, you don't associate any part, anything with him. Wa tuqimu salah, you establish salah. Wa tu'ti zakah, you give zakah. وَتَصُومُ رَمَضَانِ You fast Ramadan. وَتَحُجُّ الْبَيْتِ You perform Hajj to the house which is to the Kaaba. ثُمَّ قَارْ Then he said أَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ أَبْوَابِ الْخَيْرِ Should I not tell you of the doors, the gates to the good? Which is Then Muhammad tells him of the optional acts that get the person closer to the doors of Jannah or allow him to enter Jannah. أَصَوْمُ جُنَّةِ Muhammad said fasting is a shield. Okay, so that means do more, more fasting, optional fast, like fasting Monday and Thursday and three days in every month, so on and so forth, and that will protect you from falling into the haram and protect you from hellfire. What sadaqatu and charity tutfiul khatia, it extinguishes the sins. Kama yutfiul nar, kama yutfiul ma nar, just like um, water is extinguished. Water extinguishes fire. Okay, so when you pour water on fire, it goes off. وَصَلَاةُ الرَّجُلِ فِي جَوْفِ اللَّيْلِ And the prayer a person prays in the night, which is in the middle of the night. This is the قِيَامُ layl The person prays in the middle of the night, which is after Isha, in the middle of the night. 
Okay, so these are optional uh, fast and charity and salah. Then the Prophet sallallahu read. Thumma talahid. He read the ayah. Tatajafa junubuhum. Their sides become dry. Anil matajiri from their beds, which means, because when a person lies down on his bed, he starts to, for example, let's say if he becomes sweats or his body becomes wet because of lying on one side. So when a person is basically off his bed, that means his bed is going to be dry and his, his side is going to be dry, which is an indication, or metaphorically speaking, it says that they don't sleep much, basically. Um, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches hatta balaga ya'malun, until he reached um, the ayah where it says, ya'malun, tatajafa junubuhum, tatajafa junubuhum anil matajiri, يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفَ وَطَمَعَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they call their Allah, their Lord in hope and fear. In, ho- in fear and hope. Uh, then, going on, um, Surah Tuzah, Surah Tuzah, Surah Tuzah, Surah Tuzah, Surah Tuzah, 17 and 16. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him how to keep all this together, all the, the foundations of all of this. Okay? Which, which is Allah ukhbiruka So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Allah ukhbiruka bi ra'si al-amr Should I not tell you of the head of the matter Wa umudihi and its pillar Wa dhurwata Dhurwati sanamihi And its peak Qultu bala ya Rasulullah He said ya Rasulullah yes tell me He said qala ra'su al-amr The head of the matter is Islam Which means the head of the matter is La ilaha illallah Islam here means la ilaha illallah So if the person is Comparing the comparing Islam to a body, the shahada is like the head. So if the head is cut off, there will be no Islam. If there's no shahada, there is no Islam. So that's how important la ilaha illallah is. Wa umuduhu salah. And let's say if you compare Islam to a pillar, to to a building, salah is like the pillar or the column. So if the pillars are missing or the columns are missing from a building, it will collapse. Similarly, if the person salah is not done correctly or if you're not praying. Then his Islam is shaken and will collapse. In other cases, we know that he might even be a non-Muslim. وَذُرْوَةُ سَنَامِهِ And the peak of the matter, which it could be the peak of a camel or the peak of a mountain, the hump of a mountain, which is the highest point. So which means the highest point a person can reach in Islam is al-jihad. Okay? So it shows that Muslims, when they become strong, then they are able to defend themselves. Okay? That's when all people are praying their salah, they're praying their Jum'ah, they're praying the Fajr prayers like people are praying Jum'ah prayer. The women are observing hijab and Muslims are strong in Iman. That's when Muslims are able to then show their, um, their abilities to defend themselves. Otherwise, they will be weak. They will be weak, as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi told us in other hadiths. We will be many in number, but weak in quality. Like uh, there will people will not be strong in iman. So jihad is first of all struggle in the way of Allah. Secondly, and the, it means the defensive system or the um, you can say every government has a defense system. So the defense system of Islam and the military of Islam is within jihad. So Islam has a political it has a political structure. It has a defense system, okay? It has its own criminal law. So it's a whole system, way of life. So jihad should not be seen as people who are just conquering lands and all of that. No, it's the defense system of the Muslims where they are able to protect themselves and they are able to spread, spread the da'wah if people don't allow the da'wah to spread. Thumma qad, then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, okay, if you look after these things, this will allow you to enter Jannah. Um, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Should I not tell you how to keep all this together? Allah ukhbiruka bi malaki, should I not tell you of the leash? Dalika kullihi. So how could you hold all this together? Okay, so a person might be praying salah, might be fasting, he might be basically, um, or he might be, you know, doing all the khair, but then if he's not holding this together, this reward, he's going to lose it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, Kuffa, 
فقلت بلى يا رسول الله يا رسول الله يا تلمي فأخذ بلسان the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم took his tongue he took his he held his tongue وقال and he said كف عليك هذا control this or be careful of this okay then then the companion Mu'adh ibn Jabr says يا نبي الله O Messenger of Allah وإنا لم أخذونا are we going to be judged and held accountable بما نتكلم به with what we speak so we're going to be punished for what we say and this was a strange question and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rebuked him and said thakiratka ummuk may your mother lose you which is an Arabic expression saying how could you ask such a question وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسُ عَلَىٰ وَجُوهِمْ and many people fall on their faces okay which fall it they fall into hellfire or عَلَىٰ مَنَاخِرِهِمْ or on their noses in hellfire إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ because of what their uh, words or what their tongues have basically said or the fruits or the consequences of their words so which means um, many people will enter hellfire after doing all these good deeds because of just this one part of their body which is so small but powerful as the person doesn't control it uh, it will be basically destroying him and there's many other hadiths explain this where the whole body, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, said the whole body every morning they curse the, they curse the tongue. Sorry, I think uh, you lost me there. They curse the tongue and they say um, uh, We are basically according to how you will be. If you are good, then we will be good. If you are, and if you are bad, then we will be bad. So if you are straight upon the religion, we will be also practice the religion. So if the person says what he wants, he does basically, he's, he doesn't care about other people, and he says words of kufr and disbelief, and you know, then obviously this body is going to be punished. The whole body is going to be punished. So the, ma- the mouth and the tongue has to be controlled. Okay, and there's a hadith where Prophet ﷺ said, there will be a person who will come on the day of judgment. He, he actually, Muhammad sallam said, he's the person who's bankrupt. He, he's the muflis. The person who will come on the day of judgment with mountains of good deeds. But then he swore at this one, he hit this one, he took this one's money. And then uh, people will come and take his reward as a recompense. And then when he runs out of good deeds, they will give him their bad deeds. And then he will go to hellfire. And that all started, that was all because of his words and not uh, not looking after his his tongue or, you know, take falling uh, and taking people's rights. Wallah alam. So this is a very important hadith that we should, inshallah, uh, uh, practice in our lives. To summarize, this hadith is saying that, you know, to get to Jannah, you need to look after the five pillars of Islam. And then to excel, to look after the optional acts. Okay, the voluntary acts, and also to keep everything in place to look after the to look after the salah and to look after to look after your tawheed and your shahada, and also to to have to look after the peak of Islam, which is to reach a high level in your iman where you're able to defend yourselves and not become weak. Then also, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so you says if you so you don't lose all of this, use good words and look after your tongue and look at the consequences of what you say. Wallahu a'lam. Any questions on this hadith? Any questions on this hadith?